Today I'm gonna be going, going, doing. Today I'm going to be doing my six month channel update. It's hard to believe that it's been six months, but more importantly, it's hard to believe that I've made 100 videos. This is gonna be like my 98th video, and I have actually made 100 videos, which is a milestone that I had set for myself before I even started this. I told myself that no matter what, no matter how I felt about the whole thing, I wanted to make 100 videos before I decided what to do next. So while this is a six month update, this is also me talking about what I think the future is here and how I'm feeling now that I have made 100 videos somehow. That's a, that's a lot of videos. So I'm going to be talking all about that, where I think I'm going, what's next, all of that fun and exciting stuff. Let's go ahead and dive into it. First of all, I want to say I knew going in this is going to be work. I totally had an understanding that the people who do YouTube for a living are working and are often working really hard and are working long hours. So when I started this, I told myself it's going to be almost a full-time job. What wound up happening is that it is practically a full-time job to do three videos a week, even at the honestly kind of mediocre quality at best that I've been putting them out at. I am proud of many of the videos that I put out, but anytime I want to add a joke or something like that, it increases my production time. I'm usually spending anywhere from eight to 10 hours start to finish on a single video. So while it's not usually 40 hours a week that I'm spending on this, it is pretty close to that to do three videos per week of the quality that I am putting out here. If I just sat and did it like a talk to camera kind of video and I didn't really do any editing or add jokes or do all the cuts and things like that that I do in my videos, it would probably be a little bit faster Faster, but at the moment, it's a lot of work. One really good thing that has come out of all of the work that I've been putting into this is I have a new appreciation for the creators that I love, especially the ones that I see pouring their heart and soul into the content that they create. I have a renewed perspective on those people and on the efforts that they are putting into just to make me laugh for a couple of seconds. Because there's more to it than just writing and telling the joke to the camera. You have to do all of the editing that makes it look good and you have to do sound effects and zooming and all of this other stuff. And in some cases you have things pop up onto the screen or more so you might even do a skit that requires multiple camera cuts, which means various perspectives of yourself. And now that I have a pretty good understanding of how I would do that, I have so much more respect for the people who do that consistently. And that has led to me appreciating them even more and even noticing the small things that they do that I know took a long time to put together. There are a couple of creators in the space whose content I love and they do this really well and they work very hard on their videos. The two that I really wanna mention are gonna be uh, Jay over at Captured in Words and Cam at Wolf the Story Nomad. Now that I have a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of experience with editing my own videos, I have a new perspective on how much effort they put into theirs. They work pretty hard and often work pretty hard just to make me laugh for a couple of seconds. So that's one thing that I think is a great positive that has come from this is I have a lot more respect for the people who are in this space and especially those who I can tell take a lot of time and care with the content that they create. Another thing that has resulted from all of this is that I have really expanded my abilities. My skills in terms of video editing and video production have greatly improved, as has, honestly, my ability to critique literature and even write my own literature. All of this has really improved over time just because I have been honing these skills for the last six months over the course of creating 100 videos. It is crazy to think about how far I have come. My first video was not only horrible and is now unlisted, but was incredibly painful to make. I had no idea what I was doing, and I'm pretty sure that video took me, I think, two or three days to edit, and it's unbearable to watch. It is horrible. I had no clue what I was doing. It's bad. It's really bad. Not just the filming part of it, but the actual editing, everything about it, I hate. And I look at the stuff that I make now, and yeah, there's sometimes when I'm thinking, I could really, I could have done that a little bit better. But at the same time, it's so much better than back then when for some reason I made everything really orange. I don't even remember why I did that. I'm pretty sure that I watched like a lighting video and there was something in there about orange lighting and I was like, oh, so I should just make my videos orange. I don't know what I watched or why I implemented it as poorly as I did, but the whole thing, everything about those was awful. They were, it was really bad. So I've come a really long way in that regard and my ability to produce these videos and edit them and even the, my ability to write the videos and write my reviews and all of that has really improved over the course of all of this. And I think that these are all skills that are going to stay with me for a long time, even if I stop doing this or I start doing it a little bit less. So a hundred videos. If you go and look at my channel now, I think it probably says I have 30 or 40. And that's because over time I have unlisted the vast majority of my content. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second, but I've made a hundred videos. I have produced 
100 videos, which is just nuts to me. When I first set out to do this, I privately told myself that I was not going to give up until I had created 100 videos because this is kind of my approach to just about any hobby that I take on. I tell myself, I wanna try this for this length of time. I wanna put this much work into this before I decide if it is or isn't for me. And that way I'm not just dabbling in a ton of different things and not really picking out something that I enjoy, especially when I'm investing money into it, as I definitely have with this channel, with the camera that I have here and all of the lighting and everything. I've invested a lot of money into this. And so I wanna know that I am actually doing everything that I can to figure out if I enjoy it and figure out what I do and don't like about it and then decide if I wanna move forward. So 100 videos felt like a milestone that was gonna take me a long time to hit and that would give me plenty of experience so that I could over time improve my skills and then figure out what I was going to do next. Here we are at the 100 video mark and it's time for me to make that decision. Now these 100 videos have not been in a particular niche and that's the next point I wanna talk about. If you have been on YouTube for any length of time, even if you're not a creator and you're just a viewer, you have probably heard about the great and tremendous algorithm. So do you know what I'm going to do before I do it? Yes. You've most likely heard a lot of people complaining about it. I'm not somebody who has significant complaints about YouTube's algorithm. I don't really understand the people who do complain about it excessively because even though, yeah, it definitely has hiccups and flaws and things that need to be fixed, for the most part, it is pretty solid at delivering content that I'm actually going to enjoy as a viewer. Before I became a creator, I consistently found people whose content I enjoyed, and not just big creators. I found small creators that I really liked and that I would subscribe to. People who had south of 500 or 100 subscribers would get served to me because YouTube's algorithm would decide, hey, you might like this video and then I would have the choice to click on it. If I clicked on it and I liked it, then that person's video gets shown to more people. I think the algorithm is pretty solid on almost every social media platform. I do have some complaints about it. There are some things that need to be tweaked and fixed. And these are all things that I'm sure will be resolved over time as AI improves. One thing that people really complain about with the algorithm is that it forces you to niche down your channel. It wants you to pick a small corner of YouTube and say, hey, this is my space. This is where all of my content goes. And this is all of the kind of content I'm going to create. I don't have a problem with that. I knew going into this that I was going to create a vast variety of content because I was figuring out what I really wanted to do. And so I was not going to be successful. And so I haven't approached this with this idea or mentality that I'm going to be successful and I'm going to get a thousand subscribers in six months or anything like that. My goal really was just to make a hundred videos and see how I feel about it and engage with people on topics that are interesting to me. And I have been all over the place. I launched this channel with a 20 part series about creating a homebrew D&D campaign. That is not the kind of video that I have put out since then. I've also done book reviews, talked about my vasectomy, talked about religion, talked about my writing, and all sorts of stuff that is just disconnected and all over the place. And that's not something that YouTube's algorithm really likes because it doesn't know what to do with this content. It wants you to niche down and any YouTube creator who is successful will tell you that you need to figure out how to niche down. That is something that is really important for making sure that you are successful. Because who's going to be interested in the niche that is you specifically? People want to hear about a topic if they don't know who you are. And I haven't picked a topic or I hadn't up until very, very recently. So my videos were all over the place because I was figuring out what I really wanted to do and what I enjoyed creating. And the truth is that there were two videos that I enjoyed creating the most and that I'm most proud of. And that interestingly did pretty well on the channel. They are unlisted now because they aren't jiving with the niche that I actually am going to go into, but they were my travel videos. My video about my trip to Los Angeles and my video about my trip to Arizona. Those were both a lot of fun to produce. I was proud of them. I shared them with people and I really liked creating them. The problem is I can't consistently create travel content. So if I'm going to do that, it needs to be a totally different channel. So while I did enjoy making those, even though they were the most work that I've ever had to put into any of my videos, it's not really what this channel is going to end up being about. The other videos I enjoyed making were the ones where I got to engage with people on topics that interested me. And those topics were almost always something to do with some sort of story, whether it was the Legend of Vox Machina videos, which I got quite a bit of engagement on there. And also my Metroid review got a lot of engagement from people who either agreed or disagreed with me, or maybe they had some counter thoughts. I really enjoyed engaging with people on those. And my reviews for Dark Age and Iron Gold, I believe, got quite a bit of engagement as well. And I really enjoyed engaging on those topics. So I'm going to continue to make that content, the content that I think is going to be engaging and that is going to draw people to share their thoughts and their opinions. I'm going to start focusing a lot more on book content and not having videos that are all over the place and just are completely inconsistent and almost 
incoherent with how sporadic everything seemed. But I still wanted an avenue for being able to talk about all of the other things that interest me, like D&D and traveling and food and all of this other stuff. So what I have chosen to do is I have created a separate Instagram that's now my professional Instagram where I just have book content. And then I have another Instagram account where I'm gonna post pretty much whatever the heck I want to, and that'll be my outlet for that sort of content. So that'll be books and travel and food and everything. All of the stuff that I used to do on this channel, I'm just gonna pile onto that completely random Instagram. So if you want just my consciousness stream, uh, tealbainter.personal is the Instagram account that I've chosen for that. And then I have just at tealbainter for all of my regular stuff. Okay, so now let's get to what this video is really about, which is what's next? What's next for me? What's next for the channel? Well, as I said, I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on book and story related content. Book reviews, talking about fantasy books and sci-fi books and stories in general, whatever I'm reading, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm also gonna be lightening my load a little bit over the next few months. I've been releasing three videos a week for six months and this has really pretty much become my life. Anytime that I'm not working my full-time job with Zoom, I am here creating videos and it is a lot of work and it can be really exhausting. I'm gonna be spending the next few months up until September just doing one video a week. And I'm gonna see how I feel after doing all of that. My hope is that this will give me time to focus on some books, maybe do some traveling and just not be as stressed out as I have been creating three videos a week. I got to that 100 video milestone. I'm very proud of that, but now I'm ready to take it a little bit more slowly. So throughout the summer, you can count on one video per week from me. Maybe I'll add an extra video here or there if there's something I really wanna do and I really wanna get it out there. But for the most part, I think it's gonna end up being one video a week. And that seems so much more manageable. Honestly, ever since I made that decision, I have been working on other projects, even though I'm still doing three videos a week right now. I just feel more refreshed knowing that I'm about to slow down and I can start taking a breath from this. So it's been really fun. This has been a lot of work. It has been challenging. I have learned a lot. I've met some really cool people and I'm happy with the skills that I have developed over the course of creating all of this content. But now I'm ready to slow down and breathe for a little while. So I'm going to be doing one video per week and I'm really excited for that and really excited for whatever is to come. So thank you very much for taking the time to check out this video. I really appreciate it. If you're still here and you want to see whatever is coming up, I really appreciate it. If you'd like, comment and subscribe, all of those things really help me out. And then if you want to see another video from me, you can go ahead and click up here. Until next time, bye.